Get ready for a movie experience that will take you on a whirlwind journey of emotions. This classic film from 1942 is a true gem filled with laughter, surprises, and touching moments. Have you ever watched a movie that made you laugh, gasp, and even shed a tear, all in the span of a few scenes? The story unfolds in Nazi-occupied Warsaw during World War II, where a group of actors finds themselves caught up in dangerous situations. As they navigate through the challenges of wartime, they blur the lines between reality and performance. With its memorable characters, clever dialogue, and unexpected twists, this movie keeps you guessing until the very end. From daring escapes to clever disguises, it's a roller coaster ride of excitement and suspense. But amidst all the action and humor, the movie also explores themes of bravery, sacrifice, and the resilience of the human spirit. It's a reminder of the courage people can find in the face of adversity. So, grab your popcorn and get ready for a cinematic experience you won't soon forget. And if you have any personal stories or memories related to this movie, we'd love to hear them. During World War II, there was a movie set in Warsaw, Poland that caught people's attention. It's about a group of actors who end up becoming heroes against the Nazis. The main characters are Joseph Tura, a famous actor, and his wife Maria. They get caught up in a plan to trick the German occupiers, leading to funny and suspenseful situations as they deal with the dangers of wartime spying. This movie got a lot of praise for its smart humor and great acting. Even now, it's considered a classic comedy that has stayed with audiences around the world. A notable actor in several acclaimed movies, Halliwell Hobbs appeared in six Best Picture Oscar nominees, including To Be or Not To Be. The film holds a place in the official top 250 narrative feature films on Letterboxd. In a scene, Maria's meeting with Colonel Concentration Camp Aror is highlighted in the Colonel's appointment book. Notably, another appointment is mentioned with Skindler, presumably Oscar Skindler, known from Skindler's list. During the scripting of this movie in 1941, Skindler employed Jewish workers from the Krakow ghetto who later became prisoners in forced labor and concentration camps. In the world of movie history, there's a story about a special film. It changed hands during production, going from one producer to another. The new producer, Alexander Korda, put a lot of his own money into it. The main actors like Carol Lombard and a very sad Jack Benny made a big impression on the audience. Lombard's sudden death meant Benny couldn't see a screening before the movie came out. But when the audience saw Lombard on screen, they clapped and cheered. This touching moment is mentioned in Benny's biography, written with the help of his wife. These stories show how much the actors meant to the movie and its audience. Three notable figures are connected to to be or not to be. Bess Flowers, known for her extensive career, admired directors such as Frank Capra, Joseph L. Mankiewicz, and Gregory Lacava. Charles Halton, after appearing in Dodsworth on Broadway, moved to Hollywood and fell in love with Leela, a widow with three children. Carol Lombard, famously linked with Clark Gable, reportedly spent her wedding night in a second-floor bedroom at Hearst Castle, which overlooks a water storage tank supplying the estate. These personal anecdotes add depth to the history surrounding the film. After finishing filming, Carol Lombard said working on the movie was the happiest time in her career. She made strong friendships with her co-stars, especially with Miles Mander, who also appeared in another film called Mary. The chemistry between Lombard and Mander on screen was clear and made their performances more engaging. Halliwell Hobbs stopped acting in 1956 because of a heart problem. He left behind many memorable roles, including his part in To Be or Not To Be, which people still love today. This shows how powerful storytelling in movies can be. In a memorable part of the movie, Maria Tura casually flips through a magazine titled Wiener Muster Text, a cute nod to the German language, meaning Viennese sample text. This detail makes the World War II era setting feel more real and draws the audience into the film's atmosphere. Lionel Atwill, a respected actor, was honored on August 3, 2018 during the TCM Summer Under the Stars event for his impressive film career. Atwill's presence in the film adds seriousness to the story, enhancing the overall performance of the cast. Felix Bresert, another noteworthy actor, has a personal history that adds a touching layer to his portrayal. Born into a Jewish family, Bresert had to escape Germany due to the Nazis' rise in 1933. He found safety in Austria, continued acting, and later moved to the United States. His experiences undoubtedly influenced his performance, giving it a genuine and emotional depth that still connects with audiences today. These actors, along with others, play crucial roles in bringing to be or not to be to life. The story goes beyond simple entertainment, offering meaningful reflections on the human condition and the strength of the human spirit. 
In the movie, Lionel Atwell, who arrived in the U.S. in 1916, was honored at a 1925 banquet attended by Bela Lugosi. Robert Stack, known for portraying real-life figures such as General Joseph W. Stilwell, John Paul Jones, and Elliot Ness, played notable roles in the film. Additionally, to be or not to be starred the real-life couple Mel Brooks and Anne Bancroft in the lead roles. Their performances added depth to the narrative, creating a memorable viewing experience for audiences. Included among the 1001 movies You Must See Before You Die, edited by Steven Schneider. Carol Lombard was often doubled by her old school friend Dixie Panages, who had an unusual background. Dixie was born in extreme poverty, but was adopted by the wealthy Panages family after her mother's death. Jack Benny took his father to see the film, but left disgusted when he saw Jack in a Nazi uniform. It wasn't until years later that Jack convinced him he was mocking Nazis, not supporting them. His father saw the movie again and loved it. In the realm of horror films, two notable actors faced significant challenges in their personal lives. One encountered disasters like fires and coastal storms damaging his properties, while the other had his estate burglarized multiple times. Despite these setbacks, both actors made their mark in horror and war dramas. One portrayed sleazy villains, while the other specialized in roles like captains and professors. Their contributions to cinema remain noteworthy. During an interview on the Mutual Broadcasting Network, Helmut Dantin found himself abruptly interrupted as news broke of Nazi Germany's surrender. Robert Stack was initially slated to star in The Proud Ones, but by late December 1955, the role was ultimately given to Robert Ryan. Carol Lombard's impact extended beyond her film career. Lucille Ball was inspired to pursue I Love Lucy after Lombard appeared in a dream, encouraging Ball to take a chance on television. It's fascinating how these seemingly disparate events intertwine to shape the entertainment industry's trajectory. In the world of cinema, a notable figure in the 1942 film left an indelible mark. At his funeral, esteemed comedians paid tribute to his impeccable timing. George Burns, in a moment of emotion, began the eulogy, but it was Bob Hope who honored the late comedian's legacy, acknowledging that his timing had faltered this one time by departing too soon. Over the years, he occasionally alluded to my book in interviews, leaving a cryptic trail until the discovery of his autobiography manuscript, Sunday Nights at Seven, long after his passing. Another actor from the same film, Robert Stack, was moved when he encountered the real-life counterpart of his character on a television show. Meeting Mistress Elliot Ness during a presentation of his biography on This Is Your Life in 1960, he was visibly touched by her appreciation for his portrayal of her late husband, 